My name is Daniel. Um, I'm from Comedia. Um, uh, I work in Hamburg in Germany. And uh, this talk is about plugin development, especially with uh, Gradle as a build tool and Groovy as programming language. So uh, when you start a new plugin for, for Jenkins, you have actually uh, uh, some options uh, on how to implement the plugin. So you can choose the build tool. The obvious choice would be Maven, and then you can also use uh, Gradle. I don't know if there are others. Um, and you can choose your programming language. Um, so again, the obvious choice is Java, but you can also use Groovy. And there's uh, info on the wiki about uh, Ruby and Python plugin development. And um, for testing, you can also use several frameworks. So JUnit, again, the uh, obvious choice. But you can also use Spock, the Groovy-based uh, test framework. Um, so th this talk will be about the Groovy development stack, so Gradle, uh, Groovy-based um, build tool, and Groovy as language, and the uh, Groovy-based test tool. <laughs> so um, um, one one thing to mention before, so um, um, it's it's not the obvious choice for for developing plugins. So you you probably uh, have the least problems if you start um, picking tools. Um, from the left, so expect more problems when you go to the right on this list. So, um, so there's a, when you uh, decide to use Gradle, you need a plugin to, to package the Jenkins uh, plugin file, the HPI or JPI file. Um, the, the Gradle JPI plugin does that for you. Um, um, it's a standard. Gradle plugin which hooks into the Gradle lifecycle and, and does all the magic. Um, you should use Java 7 for, for your build. You can use, a, you can, as a target uh, JVM version, you can use something different. Um, and you have to use Gradle uh, 2.3, uh, mainly because I had to use um, some Gradle internal APIs. Um, for the plugin because I had to emulate how the, the Maven HPI plugin works and that's currently only possible using internal Gradle APIs which are only available in 2.3. And um, it will probably break if you use a new, newer versions because the internal API is subject to change so that's not that stable. So <coughs> this is an example uh, Gradle build script, the, uh, the minimal uh, script you need. So you have to um, define a build script uh, section at the top of the file, uh, which defines where to get the, the, the plugin file. That will change, uh, I hope, sometime when we, we, we are able to push the plugin to the Gradle plugin uh, center. Um, then that's not necessary. But then you have to, to apply the plugin. Um, then you have to define your Maven coordinates for your plugin. So you have to decide on a, a group. ID, the obvious choice would be org Jenkins CI plugins, your, your version, and a short description for your plugin. And then that's the JPI specific uh, configuration. So you have to choose a, a target version of Jenkins, which you're targeting with your plugin, the minimum version required, uh, display name uh, for the update center. So that's what will be shown in the, in the Jenkins update center when users will install your plugin. Um, URL to the Jenkins wiki, uh, that's important. In, in, in the future, um, plugins without a link to the wiki will not be listed in the update center. Uh, your, your GitHub URL, and you can list yourself as a, as a developer, which will then be uh, available in the, in the Jenkins wiki and the generated uh, information. Uh, the, the, the directory structure for your, for your workspace or for your repository is, is uh, quite obvious. So it's, it's more or less the same as for Maven. You have your build.gradle file where the content of the last slide goes into. And then you have a source main folder with your Groovy files and your resource files and, and the test folder with your Groovy file and your resource files. Um, the plugin exposes several uh, tasks which you can use. So uh, when you call Gradle server, it will uh, launch the embedded uh, Jenkins development server with your plugin pre-installed, which you can then for, from use for manual testing. Um, Gradle JPI will build the uh, plugin file, which you can then deploy to another Jenkins. And uh, if you want to, to publish uh, your plugin to the, to the Jenkins infrastructure, uh, you use Gradle Publish. Um, 
But as I said before, the plugin will also hook into the uh, standard lifecycle. You can use the clean, the build, the assemble task, or, or the standard uh, Gradle task, which will then uh, build the file and run the test. So for the information, um, there's, a pa uh, there's a page in the wiki about the Gradle plugin. Um, there's a component in the issue tracker, so if you uh, decide to use the plugin and uh, have any issues, re report them there. Um, if you have any questions, go to the Jenkins developer mailing list. I'm, I'm uh, listening there for, for Gradle-based questions, but other people are using the plugin also there can answer questions. And um, you find also an example, um, uh, the JobDSL plugin uses the, um, the Gradle JPI plugin quite uh, intensively, so um, it's a, it's a, it's a multi-module project um, with, with published two <coughs> modules. Um, so you can uh, get an idea uh, of a complex setup. And I'm the maintainer uh, of that plugin currently, so um, if you have any questions, ask me. So using Groovy as a, um, as a the programming language for plugins, um, <coughs> there are not many Groovy, pure Groovy examples out there, but since uh, Groovy is more or less a, a superset of, of, of Java, of the Java language, uh, all uh, Java examples or all Java documentation also applies to Groovy. Um, currently, uh, since Jenkins comes with Groovy 1.8 and it's not recommended to, to do any class loader magic to, to work around that, uh, you, you must use um, Groovy 1.8. That's also the, the dependency that gets automatically set up by the uh, Gradle plugin. So you do not need to declare that dependency. So how would, uh, uh, when you're implementing a build step, uh, how would that look like? Um, basically like a, a Java plugin, so I, I um, took the Java example and uh, left out all the optional syntax from the Groovy perspective, so you do not need to say public or void or have any semicolons or return statements. Um, you can just leave that out. Um, what's also quite nice, since you should target uh, Java 6 or Java 7 for your, for your Jenkins plugins, uh, depending on which version of Jenkins you're targeting, um, you, you cannot use the Java 8 so that's <coughs> stuff, the lambdas, and so on, but you, in Groovy you can use the uh, closure stuff, so you can have the nice uh, syntax to manipulate uh, collections of that, that stuff, so that's a benefit. Yeah, for further information about Groovy, go to the Groovy um, website. Um, there's a nice uh, newsletter uh, about um, uh, new stuff that happens in the Groovy world. So it's, you can find out the uh, uh, news about Spark and, and other, other stuff about Gradle. Um, and then there are some nice presentations about, uh, about learning gro uh, Groovy. Um, for developing plugins in general, go to go to the Jenkins wiki, to the extend Jenkins page, um, and for an example, um, there's a uh, Hello World Groovy plugin um, on on GitHub. Um, okay, last part the Spock framework. So if you're using a Groovy stack for development, you may also want to use the Spock framework for testing. Um, it's, it's more or less a, a groovy, I would say, dialect, which um, under the hood uses, uses JUnit, so it's compatible with, with JUnit, um, but it enables some nice language features. You have to stick with a Spock uh, 0.7, that's the last version that targets a groovy 1.8, so you can't use the new 1.0 version because that only targets a groovy 2 or later. Um, in your Gradle file, you have to declare dependency to, to Spock framework uh, as a test compile dependency. And the most important part when developing Jenkins plugins um, is that you may want to use the uh, Jenkins runtime in your, in your tests. And you can use the uh, rule annotation from JUnit in your um, tests. So it, um, an example, the test specification, it, test cases are called specifications in, in uh, Spock would uh, look like this. So you declare the Jenkins rule to get the Jenkins runtime, and then you can uh, 
for example, create a freestyle project, schedule a build, and then check, check the results. So that's the <coughs> typical structure of a, a spot test. Um, yeah, for further documentation, go to the, to, uh, to the Spock website, and there's a special page about unit testing for Jenkins. Uh, that's more or less all about Java and JUnit, but uh, again, most of that also applies for Groovy. So to sum up, um, if you're starting a new plugin, um, you, can, you have a little choice uh, which tools you use. You're, if you're comfortable with Gradle and Groovy, you may use that for plugin development. Uh, if you do not want if you want to avoid problems, you may stick to the first row. Oh, and as I, uh, I didn't mention that, but it's also possible to, to define the views in Groovy, but there's not much documentation out there, so uh, I do not recommend that for now. So, th uh, the, um, thank you. <laughs>